Hi, my name is Frank Lociavo, and in this tutorial, I'm going to give you a basic introduction to summation notation. Let's first get started by learning some basic symbols. In this particular example, we see a formula for computing a Pearson correlation coefficient, which is a very common statistic and something that's typically covered in basic introductory statistics courses. What we see here is that, in general, there are no numbers. Um, we see many sigma symbols, and then we also see some other variables represented with letters like x and y. So what, what do the x and y actually represent? Well, imagine that we have two variables, like height and weight, and we want to see if there was a correlation between these two variables. Well, instead of having the word height in our equation, and instead of having the word weight in our equation, we're just going to simply substitute letters X and Y. It's really that easy. So it makes it a little bit easier to write. So what we're going to be trying to do in this particular example is see if there's a relationship between a person's height and a person's weight. And those two variables are represented by X and Y. Well, another thing that we see oftentimes in statistical equations is the N. And here we see an N, another N, and another N. And N just represents the number of data points that we have for a particular variable. So for this x variable right here, we can see that we have one person who was 60 inches, the next person who we measured was 72 inches, and so forth. So in this particular case, we have six data points for this x variable. We also have six data points for the y variable. So in this case, our n equals six. Then of course, what we notice in this equation is the sigma symbol. And all it really represents is to sum something up, which means to add something up. In this particular case, it's written in a pretty formal way. We see sigma x, and it really just means sum up all of the data for the x variable. So we just want to add up all of that data. It's written in a relatively formal way because it tells us where to begin. And it says begin with the first data point. And as you're summing up, sum all the way through the nth data point, and there are six data points. So it's really just telling us sum up the entire list of data. And because that's what we usually want to do, we can write this equation, this very small equation, a little bit more simply, just sigma x. Sum up all the data for the x variable. And if we added up all the numbers in this particular case, we would find that the value is 403. All right, well, let, let's get to the steps now. Let's make sure we understand how to do this now that we know some of the basic um, symbols that, that we're going to encounter. So I'm going to teach you three different steps, and then we're going to go through several examples. So in step one, we have to identify what term follows sigma. And what we're essentially asking ourselves is a question like this. Sum up what? What am I being asked to sum up? So let's look at our data again for those two variables, x and y, height and weight. I'm going to remove uh, the descriptors there, inches and pounds, just so we're dealing with numbers. So let's say we see a very small equation like this, sigma x, sum up x. I need to ask myself, sum up what? What am I being asked to sum up? So what's attached to the sigma sign? Well, in this case, it's, it's pretty easy to see only the x's. So what we're being asked to do is sum up all the data for the x variable. Another way that this is written is sigma with x in parentheses. The parentheses aren't really adding anything new here. Again, we're just saying sum up x. So we'll, we'll usually see it written this way. Here's another example, sigma xy. Well, when we see two variables listed right together like that, it means multiplication. And what it's saying is sum up the product of each x variable with its y counterpart. So what it's saying is don't sum up anything until you have some data in which you've taken the x variable and you've multiplied by the y variable. So what it's really looking for in this equation is we take the x, which in this case is 60, we multiply by the y, which is 105. So you know this person was 60 inches and weighed 105 pounds. This person is 72 inches, weighs 213 pounds. I have to multiply those. So 72 times 213. So once I find all of those products, when we multiply things, the answer that we get is called a product. Once I find all of those products, 
then I need to sum it up. That's what this equation is asking for. Sum up the x's times y's. Here are the x's times y's. So you're starting to see why it's so important that we ask ourselves this question, sum up what? What are we being asked to sum up? It's another example. Actually, this is just an example and another way in which this can be written. And again, you see these parentheses hold this all together and they're directly related to the sigma because this comes right after the sigma. So this is the way you will typically see it because it's written a little bit more parsimoniously. It's a little bit simpler. Here we have the sum of x, that quantity squared. So again, I want to ask myself in step one, sum up what? Well, all, I'm, all I am being asked to do is sum up x. So I sum up all of these x values. And once I sum up that x variable, I'm not done, then I need to square that answer. So sum up what? It's simply asking me to sum up x. And after I find that sum, after I find that total, I'm going to square it. So you see, it's very important that we ask ourselves this question. What are we being asked to sum up? Here's another example. You can see that these are very similar, but they're asking for very different things. The sum of x squared. So sum up what? It's saying sum up squared x values. So here are all of our x values. What this equation wants us to do is sum up squared x values. So we would have to take 60 and square it. 72, and square it, and so forth. And once we find all those squares, we add them up. In this particular equation, we're being asked to find the sum of x, and then later on subtract 5. So sum up what? Sum up x. And the reason why I know I'm only being asked to sum up x is because in this equation, we essentially have two different terms. It's saying sum up x, and then I'm on to a different term. It's saying later on, subtract 5. How do I know that I'm on to a different term? Because there's this mathematical operator in here. So let me give you um, an analogy. Imagine just a sentence like this. You are smart. There are three different words in this sentence. It's just like there are three different terms if we would think about this as an equation. And the way that we separate the different parts of a sentence, the different words in a sentence, is by these spaces. Well, in a mathematical equation like this, the way we go from one term to another term is by having some type of mathematical operation in between. So in this particular case, I'd be asked to sum up x. So I'm going to sum up all these x values and then subtract 5. So the answer to the question, sum up what? I'm only being asked to sum up x. Now look and see how that differs from something very similar. This is the sum of the quantity x minus 5. You can see that this quantity is in the parentheses. So this is all being held together. And it's right up next to the sigma sign. So sum up what? What am I being asked to sum up? x minus 5. So what I would actually need to do in this case is subtract 5 from every single x value. So 60 minus 5 would be 55, 72 minus 5 would be 67, and so forth. And once I find all those values, I sum them up. So we're going to get to examples like that soon where we'll go through the entire thing and find these answers. But it's, it's first important that we understand step one, how to determine what we're being asked to sum up. Now, this equation right here is kind of similar to taking this sentence that we had over here and pushing it all together. This is now one big crazy word. Well, right over here too, this is just one big term in our equation. Here we have two terms. There's one, there's a mathematical operator separating it from the second. All right, in step number two, we set up a table. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to take this step and make it a little bit more formal. Sometimes we need to you know, calculate something new before we can add it up, but we're just going to set up a table more formally. So that's what step two is all about. All right, so again, we're going to have our heights and our weights, and I'm going to get rid of the descriptors there just so we're looking at the numbers. So now I want to make sure that I have some column labeled with what I'm being asked to sum up. And I'm going to do that by adding different parts to the table when necessary. Well, in this particular equation, I'm being asked to sum up x. I don't need to add anything to this table because I have a column with all of my x values. Let's look at another example. 
sum up x times y. So sum up the product of the x's times the y's. Nowhere in here do I have x's times y's. So what I should do in step two is create a column to my table. So I'm going to create a column that says x times y. And in that column then I'm going to multiply the x's times the y's. So here I would have 60 times 105. I would have 72 times 213 and so forth. Once I have that big long list of values, I can of course compute them and find those products and then I can sum them up. So I'm just trying to demonstrate how we would add columns to our table. So here we're, we have to ask ourselves from step one, what are we being asked to sum up? Sum up what? I'm being asked to sum up x. Well if I'm being asked to sum up, what, sum up x, I already have a column for my x variable. I don't need to add anything. Of course, once I get the sum for that, I'm going to need to square it. So I don't need to add anything for step two in this particular case. Let's look at another example. Here I'm asked to sum up the sum of the squared x values, the sum of x squared. Nowhere in here in my table do I have a column of squared x values. So let's add that. So we're going to simply square the x values. 60 squared, 72 squared, 65 squared, and so forth. And once I find all those squares, this is asking me to sum them all up. So you see how adding a column to our table is helpful. Here I'm being asked to sum up x and then later on subtract 5. Again, I already have a column for x. I don't need to add anything. I'm going to sum up all of those x values and then later on subtract 5. So I don't need to add anything to my table. Now, this was the example we just talked about. See how it differs from this one. The sum of the quantity x minus 5. This entire quantity. So here I need to ask myself from step 1, sum up what? I'm being asked to subtract 5 from every single x value and then sum up those different scores. When I subtract something from something else, what I get is a different score, a difference value. So you can see here it's going to be very helpful if we create a new column a column of x is minus 5. So I'm going to take 60 and subtract 5, that equals 55. 72 and subtract 5, that equals 67. 65 minus 5 is 60, and so forth. I have all these different scores. Now it will be very easy for me to sum up these different scores that I'm asked for right down here. That was step 2. Step three is the fun part. Now we're going to just simply sum up what we need to sum up. We're going to determine if we have the values that we are asked to sum up in step one. If we do, we're going to add them up. So we want to ask ourselves another critical question. This question's a little bit more long-winded, but once you kind of practice saying it over and over, it, it becomes second nature. Do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up in step one? So again, we have our data of heights and weights. In this particular equation, sigma x, the sum of x, I'm being asked to sum up x values. Step two, I need to determine if I need to add some column to our table. Well, I already have a column for x. I don't need to add anything. Now we're on to step three, and I ask myself, do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up in step one? Yes, I do. Well, if I do, it's time to sum it up. So at this point, we can compute the sum of x and actually add up all of these values. And again, we're just kind of going through the steps right now. We're going to go through complete examples in, in just another couple minutes. So if I was given this equation, sigma xy, I'm being asked to sum up the product of x values times y values. So step two, I want to see if it's helpful to add a column. In this case, it would be very helpful. So I'm going to add a column of x times y. 60 times 105. 72 times 213. And so forth. All right. Then I'm going to go to step 3. And I'm going to ask that critical question. Do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up in step 1? I've been asked to sum up x's times y's. Here's a column of x's times y's. Yes, I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up. Now it's time to add them all up. So another example. Sigma x squared. I want to sum up all the squared x values. 
So that's what I just determined in step one. Step two, do I need another column to make things easier? Well, I don't have a column of squared x values. I have a column of x values. So let's go ahead and make a column of squared x values. So 60 squared, 72 squared, and so forth. Once I get that work all done, I'm going to ask myself for step three, do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up? Look, I do. Now I do. I've been asked to sum up squared x values. I have a column of squared x values. I can sum them up. In this particular example, I'm being asked to sum up the quantity x minus 5. So I'm being asked to take 5 points from every single x value. All right, step 2. Do I want to make a column to make things easier for myself? Yeah, I think I should. So I'm going to label that x minus 5, and I'm going to subtract 5 from every single value. 60 minus 5 is 55, 72 minus 5 is 67, and so forth. Now I get to step 3 and I ask myself that critical question. Do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up in step 1? I've been asked to sum up x is minus 5. Here's a column of x is minus 5. So now I know exactly what to sum up. Let's go through some practice problems. In this case, we're being asked to sum up x and then add 5. So step one was figure out what do I need to sum up. Sum up what? I've determined I'm simply being asked to sum up x. And then to complete the entire equation, later on, I'm going to add 5. So I know what I need to sum up. Step two. Do I need to add a column to this table of values to make things easier for myself? I don't think I do. All I'm being asked to do is sum up x, and here's a column of x. Step three. Do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up? I'm asked to sum up x. I have a column labeled x. I might as well sum it up. So the sum of x in this case equals 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 and 4 is 13. 13 and 7 is 20. So the sum of x equals 20. I'm not done. I was asked to compute the sum of x plus 5. So now I will have 20 plus 5 equals 25. That would be our final answer. Let's look at another practice problem. Here I'm being asked to compute the sum of the quantity x minus 3. So the quantity x minus 3 is all together connected to this sigma. So now I know what I need to sum up. I need to subtract 3 from every single x score before I can sum anything up. So would it be helpful to create another column to my table? I think it would be. I should have a column where I subtract 3 from every single x score. So let's label it accordingly, x minus 3. Let's subtract 3 from every single score. 3 minus 3 is 0. 6 minus 3 is 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. 7 minus 3 is 4. Okay. At this point, I see if I'm ready for step 3. I ask myself, do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up? And in this case, I do. So all I need to do is sum up this column. 0 and 3 is 3, and 1 is 4, 4 and 4 is 8. So the sum of the quantity x minus 3 equals 8. Let's look at another problem. Here's where you're going to see where step 3 is important. When we ask ourselves that question, do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up? Because sometimes the answer is no. What do we do then? Well, let's find out. We're going to figure that out in this particular problem. So I'm being asked to sum up the quantity x minus 5 squared. So x minus 5 is held together here in the parentheses, and the exponent is attached to the parentheses. So this is all just one component of an equation. This is just one part of an equation. It's all together. So what am, what am I being asked to do? What am I being asked to sum up? I'm being asked to subtract 5 from every single x score, and then once I compute those different scores, I need to square them. Okay, no problem. So I need to ask myself, would it be helpful to add a column to my table? Because I only have x scores here. Yes, I want to subtract 5 from every single score. So let's do that. We'll label this column x minus 5. 
So let's subtract 5 from every single score. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. 6 minus 5 is 1. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And 7 minus 5 is 2. All right, that was step 2. Now I go on to step 3 and I ask myself, do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up? I've been asked to sum up x minus 5. Here's a column of x minus 5s squared. I don't have that. The answer is no. I do not have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up. So what I do at this point is I go back to step two and I say, all right, is there another column that might be helpful to add to my table? Well, what I need are squared different scores here. Once I subtract five, I need to square those values. So let's just create another column. We'll label it x minus five, that quantity squared. I'm just going to take these x minus fives and square them. So negative two squared is going to equal four. 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. Now I go back to step 3 and I ask myself, do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up? And I do. And because I do, I can go ahead and add them up. 4 and 1 is 5, 6, 6 and 4 is 10. So the sum of the quantity x minus 5 squared equals 10. Look at another example. This one is pretty similar to that. Step one, ask ourselves, sum up what? I can see that because we have parentheses, this part of the formula is all connected. It's all attached to my sigma, including that exponent. I'm being asked to add two to every single value and then square that sum. Okay. So going to step two, would it be helpful to create a column? Yes, let's create a column where we add two to every single value. So I'll label that x plus 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. 6 plus 2 is 8. 4 plus 2 is 6. 7 plus 2 is 9. Step 3. Do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up? No, I don't. Because I've been asked to square these values. Here I just have a column of these sums where I've added 2 to every single score. So I go back to step two and I ask myself, would it be helpful to create another column? Yes, it would be. So I take that x plus two and I'm going to square it. Here are all the x plus twos. Let's just square them. Five squared is 25. Eight squared is 64. Six squared is 36. Nine squared is 81. Step three, do I have a column labeled with what I've been asked to sum up? And the answer is yes, I do. In this particular case, I'm going to need to pull out a calculator real quickly. So let's see what this would equal. We have 25 plus 64 plus 36 plus 81 equals 206. 206. All right, that's our answer. The sum of the quantity x plus 2 squared equals 206. All right, some final thoughts and summation notation. First of all, it's very important to master. I mean, you can see here that the language of statistics is written in summation notation. And furthermore, it's sometimes easy to um, confuse some of what we're asking, being asked to compute. I and mean, we can see here, here's the sum of x squared, here's the sum of x that quantity squared. We need to make sure that we can understand the distinctions there. Here's the sum of x times y. Here's the sum of x times the sum of y. It's very important to master it. And it's not overly difficult, but as you can see from what we just discussed, it does require practice. So we need to make sure we, we practice it. Good luck. I really hope this tutorial has been helpful to you. Uh, summation notation, I think, is kind of fun to play with, and it's very important to master so that you can do well in the rest of your statistics course. Good luck.